Okay, Grace, Jason, we'll give it one more minute. I think we'll kick it off. All right. Go ahead and get started. Yeah, I think it's cool. I think everybody, we give it a couple of minutes. Um, cool, Grace. Yeah, go ahead and kick it off. Cool. So welcome, everyone. Um, today we are going to talk about WP GraphQL for ACF. Um, I'm Grace Erickson. I'm a headless developer advocate at WP Engine, and I will let Fran and Jason introduce themselves. Yo, I'm Fran Agulto, uh, Grace's teammate on the Headless Developer Relations team here. And I'm going to pass it off to my man, Jason Ball. Yeah, hey, I'm Jason Ball. Uh, I create and maintain uh, WP GraphQL and some extension plugins like WP GraphQL for ACF and uh, employed here at WP Engine as a principal engineer. He's the reason we're all here today. <laughs> yeah. um, next slide. Was our keyword mullet? I don't know. <laughs> mullet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. So we just have a quick etiquette alert um, first. So please be excellent to one another. And this is being recorded um, and will be uploaded onto our WP Engine Builders YouTube channel. And then lastly, just please be kind to all share dem demo resources. Um, if we show a key or anything like that, um, please do not um, overload our resources. Mullet. Who is this? Is this me then? Or is this, this is are you? Fran. All right. <laughs> Fran, you muted. Oh, I'll just take it. Um, okay, so what we're covering today is um, we'll kind of go over an intro to the WP GraphQL um, IDE how we can add ACF fields and field groups to the GraphQL schema, how to see ACF field groups in WP GraphQL IDE and how to query that data. Um, and then we'll kind of go into using WP GraphQL fragments with ACF field groups and explore all of the various ACF field types. And then lastly, we will look at using ACF blocks with the WP GraphQL. So I think next we're gonna kick it to the demo with Jason. We so I will continue sharing my screen. All right. And uh, I will try and keep the chat open on the side, but I might miss it. So Fran or Grace, like, feel free to interrupt if there's something I should pivot and chat about. Um, so yeah, let, I'll uh, let's set the stage. So I'm using uh, local WP uh, to have a local WordPress install um set up and i have just a vanilla wordpress install just set it up today with pretty much nothing in here um but uh we have some plugins that are inactive at the moment and so we'll activate and talk about like what these plugins do and incrementally look at like how the features all work together um so for folks that are not familiar with wp graphql in general uh, let's start there. So I'm going to, I'm going to activate WP GraphQL. This plugin is uh, available on the wordpress.org repository. So you can install it from there. Um, if you want to contribute to it or whatever, you can find it on GitHub as well and uh, get it there. But yeah, the recommended installs from either wordpress.org or composer using like WP packages. So I'm going to go ahead and activate WP GraphQL. Um, what this does, it does a couple things. It gives us this uh, admin UI here, which gives us 
this IDE called the Graphical, where we can explore the GraphQL schema. And then the second thing it does is it gives us what's called a GraphQL endpoint. Uh, and this allows us to communicate with WordPress via the graph query language. So I'll show you real quickly what the endpoint would look like. So if I go to my site slash GraphQL, this URL would allow us to send requests to it and get responses back. And you'll see, like, instead of getting a WordPress page template, I'm getting JSON in response. This is saying, hey, you didn't send a GraphQL request. Please send a request, right? So I can, like, send a request or a query in the URL. So I could do, like, question mark query equals. And this may or may not make sense yet. So we'll look at this in a minute. But I can send what's called a GraphQL query. So I can ask for something like posts and the individual post nodes. And then I can ask for individual fields like ID and title. And, oh, post nodes, I've made the typo there, sorry. So I can ask for things like the ID and the title of posts in my WordPress install uh, by sending a query. Now this is obviously gonna be hard to understand like, I don't get what this looks like. How do I structure this? So that's where the tool graphical IDE comes in. So I'm gonna go back into my WordPress dashboard. Oops. I'm gonna go back in my WordPress dashboard and we'll open the graphical IDE here. And what this allows us to do is browse the GraphQL schema. And uh, so at the root of GraphQL, we define what is possible to be asked for in the system. And at the start of it is queries. And so we can click into here and we can see all the fields that we can ask for. And if you're familiar with WordPress, some of this will be familiar to you. Like cat WordPress has categories, we can ask for categories. You can ask by for list of categories or individual categories, individual comment, list of comments, um, and all sorts of stuff. You can search this, you can search for like post. And you can see the different ways posts are exposed in the schema. You can search for things like page or tag, right? So you can search the schema to see how this, th this stuff is available to you. Um, so this tool allows us to execute queries, see the results, and uh, we'll be using this to demonstrate a lot of stuff today. Um, so I will walk through just some basic uh queries of uh, GraphQL. So to, to open a query, you use these curly braces um, and optionally you can give it a name with the keyword query. So you can say query my query name and that name can be whatever you want it to be. Um, and then within these braces, you ask for the fields that you want. And so if we look at root query again, any of these fields here can be asked for. So in WordPress, at the heart of WordPress is posts, so we'll uh, we'll ask for posts, and so I can say posts, and you can see it will start to auto complete for me. So I ask for posts, and in uh, in GraphQL, every uniquely identifiable object is considered a node. So we're asking for posts, and on that we want a list of the unique nodes or the unique objects, right? And then on this, I can uh, command click here in graphical. And it will take me to the definition of that field. So this field will return a list of post nodes. If I click on this, we can see the fields that are available to the post, right? So I can click for ID. I can start typing title. Any of these fields I can ask for, right? And then I can execute my query by clicking this play button here. And we see we get the we get the fields that I asked for. We don't we don't get a random payload of you know hundreds of fields that we didn't ask for, we get exactly what we asked for. And one of the cool things we can do is uh, ask for nested resources or related resources. Like we know that posts have relationships to things like tags. And so we can ask for tags with their nodes and ID and name, for example. This probably will return a bunch of null connections because I don't have any data here. But if we went to a post, for example, and uh, we'll add a tag here, demo tag, right? And we will update that. So now that has a demo tag. If I come back here and execute this query, now we see that the posts with the tag 
has the demo tag. So we can query for individual resources or related resources. Uh, we can switch this up and query for things like tags and it will validate, It'll, it will say tags don't have a title, but they do have a name and tags don't have relationships to tags, but they do have relationships to posts. And then the posts have titles. So then I can do a reverse. I can query for tags, right? And then they're related posts, right? So GraphQL exposes the, the data in WordPress as a graph and lets you, the consumer, write queries to select what you need from the graph. Um, mm -hmm. And it's all documented here in the schema. It's self-documenting the fields, describe what, what they are and what they return. Um, so yeah, that's a, kind of an intro to WP GraphQL. Uh, there's other videos on there that get deeper into it and some more concepts, but that's kind of the gist of it. Uh, so once you're familiar with GraphQL and the graphical IDE, um, we will uh, take a look at ACF now and how we can use ACF to, you know, modify the GraphQL schema and get our ACF data out of GraphQL. So now we'll, uh, let's take a look at the plugins. So I have here, I'm going to use ACF Pro. You can use ACF Free, um, but for the sake of uh, this setup, I have ACF Pro installed. I don't know if I'll, yeah, I probably will demo some pro features, but we'll start with some uh, free features as well. Um, so let's uh, let's activate ACF and take a take a look at a couple things here. So I do have a couple demo field groups. I'm actually going to trash these and we'll we'll start uh, from from scratch. So I'll empty the trash there and. All right. Okay. So in ACF, uh, in ACF, we have the ability to create field groups and you can do this in the, in the WordPress UI like this, or you can register field groups in PHP or a feature called local JSON where your field groups are JSON and uh, not loaded from the database. But for the sake of demo, we'll use the UI here. So I'm going to click add field group. If you're familiar with ACF, this should look familiar. And so we'll create a field group. Uh, we'll just call this like a demo field group real quick. And with ACF, the way it works, right? You create a field group and the group has fields and then you assign those fields to locations in the WordPress admin. So let's take a look at that. Let's say our demo field group, let's have a text field. This is a field that's available to ACF free or pro. And we will simply, I'm really good at naming things. So we'll call this a text field. And uh, yeah, we can, if we wanted to give it a default value, we can give it a default value. So I'm gonna go ahead and save these changes real quick. Um, and the location rules actually, sorry, let me talk about this. The location rules, we're, we assign this to any post of the post type post. So if I go to edit a post in WordPress, I should see this field group with a text field. So I will do that and then We'll just, uh, yeah, we'll go add a new post. We'll say demo post. And if we scroll down here, we'll see demo field group. This is the field group we just created. And it gives us a text field that lets us enter text into a text input. So I can say demo field content. And we can publish this. Cool. So that's, that's ACF. I can create field groups with various types of fields and assign it to WordPress. If I if I'm using GraphQL though, how do, how do I how do I get this data out right? Like if I'm querying my posts, if I'm looking at the documentation for a post, I'm not going to see any information about my text field in here, right? And so you're thinking like, hey, hey, I have this information on posts provided by ACF. How can I get it in GraphQL? So that's where the plugin WP GraphQL for ACF comes in. So if you want to expose your ACF data to uh, WP GraphQL, there is this bridge plugin that does merge the two. So I'm gonna go ahead and activate uh, WP GraphQL for ACF. And what this does, if we go look at um, our field groups again, what we see here now is we have, we have a couple new uh, fields here in the list table for our field groups. So our demo field group, 
is now represented in WP GraphQL in the schema by this uh, GraphQL type name, Demo Field Group. And it has these ACF interfaces, or sorry, it has these uh, WP GraphQL interfaces, which we'll look at what those mean in a minute. And it's assigned to the location in the schema of post. So if we look at our uh, schema again, I'm actually, we have a, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna activate one more plugin real quick to make uh, some things a little bit easier. So we have a we have a new project that we're working on an, an update of the graphical IDE. I think it, it's got some really cool features. You can find it on GitHub. I'm going to activate this. Uh, the purpose is not to demonstrate this plugin, but you guys will uh, maybe enjoy this anyway. So what, the, what this plugin does it allows me to um, open the graphical IDE like as a drawer here, so I can open it from any page, and I think that'll uh, save some time on some things. But anyway, so if we're if we're looking here. Um, our demo field group that we created, it's represented as demo field group in the graph. So if I open up graphical IDE, um, this one, the docs are, are switched to this side, but I can search demo field group. And now we can see that the schema has uh, this ACF field group in various places, right? We have, we have with ACF demo field group. So I can click on that and see what that means. And this, this says, okay, it's an interface that provides access to fields of the demo field group, ACF field group via the demo field group field. And this is implemented by post. And so there's a field called demo field group. And if I click onto that, we can see, okay, the demo field group has a text field, right? Just like we added to our field group. So these types are now added to my schema and I can uh, use this with ACF demo field group to now access data, right? So on my posts, if I execute this query again for posts, uh, title, oh, title. So we're getting, we're getting our post with our title. And so what I can do now, I can say on with ACF demo field group. And we know that this type, if I click on that again, it has a field called demo field group. So I can start typing in, it will, uh, pre-fill for me. And then if I, Command, I'm going to command click that again, and it's going to tell me, okay, this this returns a type demo field group, which has fields text field, so I can start typing text field. Now I can execute this query, and we'll see any any of the posts. We only edited, uh, oh, I guess I had one uh, from a previous demo, but uh, any of them that have the uh, text field filled in will now return that data from ACF, right? Um, so if I want to go add another field to my field group, we can go add another field, like, I don't know what other types of fields. We have image fields, for example, and we'll very creatively call this image field. Uh, and one, one thing you'll notice too, after I activated WP GraphQL for ACF, we now have this GraphQL tab on our, on our individual fields, right? So it, it does some defaults for you, but you can also come here and configure it. Like if you want this field to be hidden from GraphQL, you can hide it from GraphQL or you can show it, you can change by default, like it will map map your name to a GraphQL friendly name, but you could change this. Like we could call this like my cool image field or whatever, right? We can override the default. So I could, I could save this here. We can click save. And if we open up graphical again, um, this button on the new one uh, will refetch the schema. And so if I command click on this uh, title again, we can look and okay, text field and my cool image field. So now we see this new field that we added in GraphQL. And so we can add that to our query. It's going to say, hey, you can't just ask for an image alone. An image is an object that has other fields, right? And so if I command click on this again, it's going to say, okay, this returns a connection to a node. So we have to query this with a node. And if I click command click that again, it will say, okay, a node is of type media item. And a media item has all of these fields like alt text. So I can select alt text, for example. I could select, I don't know what, what a, like there's a media item URL. If I query this right now, we're going to get a null because we haven't added any images. But if I go add an image, so I'm going to close that. We'll go back to our post and we will edit the post. So now we have our image field for our field group. 
Uh, I can select an image and we can update our post. And then in graphical, again, I can execute this. And then the one post that has the image, we will get the data, right? Um, so I can add fields with ACF and then I can select fields with GraphQL. Um, okay, so that's a that's kind of a, a gist of like adding fields with uh, ACF and then configuring. I'm gonna take a look at the chat real quick and see if there's anything I should touch on. Let's see. Uh, looks like some conversation about WP GraphQL versus REST, maybe. Um, is it possible to learn GraphQL in just one hour? I would say, I would say learn GraphQL in one hour depends on your previous experience with APIs and technology in general. Um, if you're familiar with RESTful APIs already, then learning GraphQL might not be uh, super difficult. If you're new to development in general, it might take a minute to understand concepts and how it works. Um, but I do think, I do think this IDE helps a lot in understanding oh. how it works, right? Um, playing around with it and, and seeing how it works. Yeah, and did, I, I threw in the chat too, just my article on like, yeah. it starts at a high level and then drills down into everything as far as the nomenclature in the graph query language and everything that Jason has been talking about. Because like to his point, can, can you learn in an hour depending on your previous software development experience with APIs? Sure you could, but your level of usage of it and your proficiency in it in an hour, I, I would say you'd have to, it's, yeah. it's, yeah, it's not. Yeah. Anyway, but yeah. Yeah. I think you can learn the, the basics, um, but we, we will skip ahead. I'm, I'm actually going to show some more advanced features uh, to help you figure out how to use this like in a in real life, right? Um, so if, if you've heard me talk about WP GraphQL or GraphQL in general before, you've probably heard me say, one of my favorite features of GraphQL is this thing called fragments. Um, it's a super powerful thing. And so I want to show, and I think it's, it's incredibly powerful when using WP GraphQL for ACF. Um, and so I will show you the concept of fragments and then I'll show you how it applies to ACF and how you can do some really cool stuff with it. So um, this this syntax, this on right here, this uh, this is a what's called an inline fragment. And if if we look at if we I'm going to command click this nodes again and we see that it returns a list of posts and I'm going to click post again. What what you see here in the docs post implements these interfaces. So in GraphQL interfaces are uh, types that define specific fields that other types can implement. So if we click on any of these, like if I click on node, a node is defined as an object that has an ID. So if you think in WordPress, that'd be like posts and tags and users and you know categories and uh, anything like that, uh, media items. Anything that can be uniquely identified by an ID would be considered a node. And then you have things that don't necessarily have an ID, you know, like just objects that describe like meta on a post isn't individually identifiable. It's just an, it's data that describes a node, right? You have post and then post meta. So the meta itself isn't isn't a node, but a post is. And so we can actually click on that. We see node is anything that has the ID field. And we can see all the things in the graph that are nodes. So categories, we have scripts, style sheets, content types, taxonomies, users, comments, all these things. If I go back, we can look at different kinds of nodes. So content nodes in GraphQL are equivalent to kind of like host of any post type, right? So if I click on content node, we can see, oh, these are all fields that all content nodes share. So post of any post type has a date, it has a database ID, it has a content type name, it has a desired slug, it has all these fields that all posts of any post type have. So this this is shared across any of those. And if I scroll down, we can see, okay, a media item is a content node, a page is a content node, and a post is a content node. So any of these types have all of these fields. Uh, 
and so you can keep looking through like anything that is a data that has database identifier has this database ID field. So this is how you can explore the schema and see like what types have a database ID, what types have, I don't know, what types are previewable. For example, pages and posts are something you can preview. You can't preview a user, right? But you can preview a page or a post. Um, so you can explore the graph in this way. When it comes to uh, WP GraphQL for ACF, all field groups, uh, and like we said, like we looked at here, they're exposed with this with ACF prefix. And so these are these are interfaces uh, that map to the locations that the field group is shown on. So right now we have one field group that is a, assigned to one location, right? And so we see that with ACF demo field group is implemented by post, but if we go change our field group, I'm gonna go to ACF field groups. We're gonna come edit our demo field group. Right now, this is assigned to post type is equal to post. Let's maybe add this somewhere else. Uh, we're gonna say, or let's say maybe taxonomy is equal to tag, right? Uh, so what this will do in the WordPress admin, when we're editing posts, we'll have a text field and an image field. And when we're editing tags, we'll have a text field and an image field. So let's make sure what the location rules we try our best, WP GraphQL for ACF tries our best to interpret these rules and figure out the best place in the schema to expose this field group. Sometimes it can't figure it out. So it's, a, it's always best to check this tab and you can see here, it should show here. Um, no, uh, it's, yeah, it's not mapping for some reason. So we can we can click this and we can map. So if in our case, we wanted to map to post and tag, and we'll save these changes. Um, and we can double check here. So yep, GraphQL field locations, this is gonna show up on the post and the tag locations. So now if we open our graphical IDE again, uh, we can refetch the schema. I'm gonna command click on this again. And now we can see with ACF demo field group, is implemented on post and tag, right? So now I'm gonna go edit a tag just so we can see this. We'll go to tags, we'll edit our demo tag. So an ACF added it to the admin for us, right? So now I can update uh, demo tag text field. And I have just the one image in my media library. So we'll use that one again. So now I can update it here and in GraphQL, this is really cool. So I can query for posts. GraphQL, I can also query for other root resources. So I could say tags in the same request. Like in REST, I would have to hit a separate endpoint for the tags and separate endpoint endpoint for the post. If I want to, I can query for tags here. We can ask for the ID and the name. I'm gonna copy this real quick. And we can say, if this node is with this demo group, then give me those demo group fields. So if I execute this again, we should get our, our tags with the demo group fields that we just added, demo tag text field with the image that we just uploaded to it. Then we get our list of posts, same thing, the one that has our demo field content and our image that we uploaded. So when it comes to fragments though, I'm using what's called an inline fragment right now, but uh, GraphQL allows you to uh, take, you can create what's called named fragments and then you can reuse them. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to, I'm going to copy this and, uh, we're going to go to the bottom of this document here. I'm going to write the keyword fragment, right? Fragment. And then we give it a name and this name can be whatever we want it to be. In my case, I'm going to call like a uh, demo field group. And then I'm going to paste what I copied here and we will get rid of those three dots. This button, if I click this button, uh, this will kind of, it's called Prettify, it'll reformat it so the spacing is all consistent. So what I'm doing here, I'm I'm giving it a name. This is like kind of like a variable. I can name this whatever I want, as long as it's unique in the request. I can't have, I can't have two fragments in the same request with the same name. But as long as it uh, doesn't conflict with another fragment, I can name it that. And then what I can do is I can copy the name of it. And instead of doing the fragment in line like this, I can just say 
boom, demo field group. So dot, 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 demo field group. So this dot, dot, dot will say, hey, reference this fragment and then execute those fields for me. So I can say demo field group there and demo field group there. So I can write this one fragment that asks for my text field and my image field, and I can reuse this in different parts of my application that is asking for data. So if I execute this again, we're going to get the exact same results, right? So it allows me to simplify things. So if you're if you're building um, component pay, component based uh, applications with React or Vue or whatever it might be, uh, what this allows you to do is build components that have a specific purpose. Like let's say I had a component that needed this text field and this image field, right? To show maybe like I don't know the header of the post or something like that. We have a component that needs these two fields. I can write a fragment that des describes what I need for that component. I could put this fragment in the actual file with the component. And then in some higher level component, I can import the fragment and the component. And then I can share this fragment with my query. And then I can render that component. So it allows us to break down our data dependencies with the component that needs that data. So in the future, if uh, you know you built this project that renders the text field and the cool image field, you shipped it, your site's live, people are loving it. Then your manager comes back and is like, hey, you know what? We need this other field that, uh, you know, I don't know, shows a related post or something. We need that in that component, right? Okay, cool, great, I can do that. So you come back to ACF, right? We go to ACF field groups, let's add another field. Uh, okay, manager, I need to add a related post. Great, we'll do that. So I can come in here, we'll do a, like a relationship field. It's pretty cool. ACF allows you to like uh, browse these fields too. They got all sorts of cool fields. You can identify like which ones are available with free, which ones are available to pro, things like that. So we're doing this relationship field. Um, we'll, can, we'll configure this. We'll say related posts and we'll just go with related posts here. We could, if we want, like filter what we can select from. So we'll just uh, filter it to posts. And uh, I think that'll probably give us what we need. Uh, GraphQL, we can come and check here. So again, it like defaulted to related posts. If I wanted to change the name, I could. We'll leave it as related posts. And then I have a, a option here to change how it shows in the schema. So it could be a one-to-many connection, which would be like, uh, if we want to allow multiple posts to be queried, or we could do a one-to-one -one connection. So if we wanted the related post to only show one post instead of many posts, so you have that option. We're going to leave it as a plural connection, so it'll it'll expose in GraphQL as multiple. So I'm going to go ahead and save that change, and we'll go edit our post again. So if we go to demo post, now we have this sweet related post uh, UI, right? And so I'm going to just click a couple of these related posts and we'll go ahead and update that. So my manager told me, hey, I need to add this feature. I added it to the admin. Now my now my team that's producing content can add these fields. But now I need to display these fields, right? So I can come back to GraphQL. Um, I can uh, make sure my schema is refetched and we'll look at we'll look again at our demo field group. So I'm going to uh, command click this again. We'll go into demo field group here and we'll see. Great. I have my cool image field, which we're already using. I have my text field and now I have related posts, right? So I just added this. Now I can go ahead and query for this. So if I look at this related posts, I see I see it has uh, these like purple things right here. What are those? Okay, those are, those are called arguments in GraphQL. So those allow users to pass input to the field to modify how the field is returned. And we'll look at that in a second. Um, but we can pass a couple arguments to this. And then we can also see, okay, what does this return? And if I click on this, it will say, okay, this field returns a connection with a field called nodes. I'm familiar with that now, right? I've seen this nodes field. This one returns a, a list of content node, which we're kind of familiar with. We talked about that. A content node is any node of these types, right? Uh, so 
if we come back here, we can now query this field. So we'll go my image field, text field. We'll go on the next line. We'll say related posts. And we'll say nodes. And again, if I click on this, it was a list of content node. And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to query this field called type name. And that means like whatever type of object is in that related post field, we'll get that uh, type returned to us. So I'm, I'm going to execute this query as is. If we scroll down, we'll see, okay, the related posts. We When we edited our posts, we added three posts to our related post field. And we see that when we query, okay, we got three nodes back, all of the type name post. And so using another fragment, I can say on post, if the object that is being returned to me is of the type post, then I can determine what fields I want returned to me. So I can say, if it's a post, I want the ID and I want the title. And so if we execute that again, now when we, when we get a post returned for our related post field, we get the ID and the title, right? And what's really what's really cool is I can use uh, multiple uh, decoupled fragments, so or a named fragments. So we'll say like on post content or something like that. So we can we can name it here, and then we'll come down. We'll say fragment post content uh, on post. And we'll say ID and title. So now we can reference the post content as another fragment, right? So we, if we're building our component-based architecture, we want we might want a component that renders the related post in the sidebar, for example, right? And that component would have a specific responsibility of uh, rendering the title and probably the link. You probably want like the link, right? So like you might have this list of related posts that have the title and the link. So you could have a component that is responsible for rendering just that. And that component could have this fragment coupled right next to it. And then the component you worked on last week to, to render the header or whatever can have this component. So you can, you can break your pieces up. However, you're building your components, you can couple your fragments with those things. Um, you can have, you could have this be a fragment. If you wanted that to be a fragment, it's whatever, whatever you want. And you can compose them and uh, and build them up. Um, so yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Frank. Oh no, there was just a quick question in the chat because I've never uh, had experience with this. But Mark asked, does does this mean we must use the ACF UI and not something like extended ACF? Ever, ever uh, um, I'm not familiar with extended ACF, but I uh, just click this link. Uh, I do. Is this is this different than ACF? Extended, it does look like it. Um, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not familiar with this, but if you do register with uh, PHP or like local JSON, um, it it works, right? Um, so I, I'm not familiar with this particular extension, but I assume if this registers ACF fields the same way any of the other mechanisms register ACF fields, then it should work because basically. WP GraphQL 8 for ACF just figures out what field groups and fields are registered and adds them to the schema. So I imagine this would work. Um, you might, you there would be a couple fields that you would have to make, if you're registering in code, you would have to make sure some things are configured. So um, we can take a look at that real quick. Um, like ACF, if I come here to my field groups, if we go to tools, for example, um, and like I can click the field group and click generate PHP, for example. Um, so you'll see like this adds this adds some fields like showing GraphQL, true or false. So like one is true and zero would be false. The description, the GraphQL field name. So if you are registering in code, like this generated the PHP. So if I was registering PHP, I would need to add these values because the UI didn't do it for me, right? So if I'm doing this in PHP or JSON or the extended way, I assume there's a way to set these fields through that. So as long as you set those fields, then you should be you should be fine. Um, so same thing, like on the individual field level, you can say shown GraphQL, GraphQL description, uh, field name, connection type. And then same thing on the field group, you can say if you want the field group to be shown in GraphQL, the name, 
uh, and then the types in the graph to connect that field group to. So if you can if you can define these fields through whatever way you're registering fields, it should work. If it doesn't, for some reason, open an issue on WP GraphQL for ACF repo uh, on GitHub um, and provide steps to reproduce and we can look into it. But I, I do imagine it would work. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, somebody somebody asked if the code is available on Git. It is. So it's on GitHub, WP GraphQL. So github.com, WP dash GraphQL, and then WP GraphQL without the dash, <laughs> uh, dash ACF. So WordPress.org recently changed. We can't add the plugins that start with WP dash anymore to the WordPress.org repo. So our newer plugins are WP GraphQL one word without the hyphen just so you all know um but so wp graphql dash acf wp without the graph or without the dash wp graphql so that that's the that's the github repo so yeah if, if something's not working go ahead and open an issue here with steps to reproduce and we can take a look at that um okay so we looked at using fragments we looked at a couple of field types um let's take a look at um acf blocks um I think that's pretty cool. I will have to probably, I need to probably get my license key to use this though. Give me a second. I should have had that set up, sorry. Um, do, do I need it? Yeah, I think I do. Give me one second. Uh, so blocks, uh, ACF, ACF blocks is a feature of ACF Pro. Um, if you are building sites that use the block editor and you're using ACF like I don't I don't know why you wouldn't use ACF blocks. It's uh it's pretty sweet. Um but yeah let me get my license code and activate it real quick one second. So I'm gonna learn something here Jason because I'm gonna do this I've in another user. tab. I've been using all right. Okay. So we activated that. All right. And then, okay, so um, ACF, ACF blocks, um, there's a couple ways to register ACF blocks. Um, most of them require some sort of code, but there is another WP GraphQL, ex or sorry, another ACF extension, which for the sake of simplicity, I'm gonna activate that. So advanced custom fields extended pro, I'm gonna go ahead and activate this. So this is a, this is a plugin that uh, we adds a bunch of different capabilities to ACF. Um, it adds various field types. WP GraphQL for ACF does is compatible with the field types brought in by ACF Fields Extended. But one one thing that it does, it adds the ability to register block types here in the UI. So I can come here to yeah. So I already had one here. I'm gonna I'll trash this just so we can do it together. Um. So I can come here with ACF Extended Pro, I can come in here and I can add new block types. So we can call this like demo block and we'll give this demo block. And this is a demo block. And then we can give it a category in uh, the block editor. We'll just leave it there. Uh, and then we could choose where it should show up. I'll just say like post post some pages uh, and then there's various uh, parameters. I'm just gonna go ahead and save that as is right now. Um, yeah, and then there's a bunch of different stuff we can do there. Um, so now, now we have a block. Now, if we want to add fields to our block, uh, we can do that. So I'll just use the same field group that we already created and we will come here, we'll say location rules. We'll say block, oh, nope, block is equal to demo block. So now our demo block, when we're when we're editing content and we come across a demo block, it will have these fields as well, right? So I can come and go to our post. We'll edit our demo post. So we had we had our we had our field groups down here, but we also have our block editor up here, right? So I can start typing content. This is some content, right? And then I can forward slash demo block. This is the block that I just registered with ACF blocks without writing any code, which is cool. 
it, at the moment, like I didn't provide a render template or whatever. So like there's nothing to preview here, but I can click edit. Um, and if I edit this, right, we have the text. So I could say text field on a block. We'll add the same image we've been adding everywhere. And then the same thing, I can choose a couple posts here. So this is just like a way, like I don't obviously have to use the same field group everywhere. I'm uh, Whatever field group you add, uh, you can do this here. Um, so that, that allows us, this allows us to register blocks and then edit blocks using ACF and ACF field groups. But to query the blocks, there is one additional plugin and that's WP GraphQL content blocks. This plugin is uh, built by our team here at WP Engine. Um, it's not on the WordPress.org repo. You can find that on GitHub though. GitHub WP Engine. Engine, WP GraphQL content blocks. So yeah, github.com slash WP engine slash WP dash GraphQL dash content blocks uh, for now. So you can find that on here, um, go to the releases and uh, well, whatever, you should be able to download it from there. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and activate that. And let's take a look at what that does to GraphQL. So with, with uh, I'm gonna open the IDE again make sure our schema is fresh. And then what WP GraphQL content blocks does is it expo it exposes um, types for blocks. So we can search for block, for example. We'll see, okay, there's a type called editor block. And then there's an interface called node with editor blocks. So similar to like the with ACF field group concept, we have this with editor blocks. If I click on that, we can see all the types in our graph that support editor blocks. This would be any post type that has the Gutenberg block editor enabled, right? So if I can use blocks on posts and pages, I should be able to query them as blocks in the graph. So we can see that here. And then what WP GraphQL for ACF does on top of that, it's that it adds a top a type called ACF block, right? So I can click on this now and I can see these are all the fields available to all ACF blocks. And then these are the blocks that implement it. So we have one ACF block that we registered called ACF demo block. I can click on that. I can see all the things that it implements. And then I can see the fields that I can query on this, right? Um, so let's take a look. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna clear out our query for now. And we'll uh, start fresh. We'll say posts, nodes, ID, and then we're going to use a fragment again and we'll say editor blocks. So we'll name this fragment editor blocks on node with editor blocks. And then if we click that, we see it has a field called editor blocks. And if we click that, we'll see this returns a list of editor block. And when it's a list of nodes, a block is a node right? The block is implements node. It, it has a lot of things, but um, we can, or no, a block is not a node, but a block is, a block could be any of these things. So we can query the type name field. And when we query the blocks, we see, okay, it's a paragraph and it's the demo block, right? If we look at our page again, or our post, we had a paragraph and our demo block, right? And now I can, now I can uh, come in and specify different fields for the different types. So paragraph, we'll use fragments again. We'll say fragment on, uh, we'll say paragraph block on. So we can see we have all these block types showing up now in our schema. And we can click on this and see what fields are available. So the core paragraph has all of these things. We can ask for, let's say the name, and then what we're probably interested in is some of these attributes. So these attributes uh, like the class name, the content, uh, the drop cap, the font family, the inner content, things like that. So we can say attributes like a line, maybe like, is it left aligned, center line, right line? And then we can ask for like the inner or what is it? Uh, rendered, what uh, rendered HTML? Actually, we'll, uh, we can ask for this. I'm going to ask for rendered HTML for every block. And then for specific blocks, we'll ask for a specific field, right? So, 
every block will get the type name and rendered HTML, and then specific blocks will get different fields. So if I execute this, I'm going to prettify that again, formats it. If we execute, oh, ah, I didn't use this, right? So this tells us, hey, you wrote this fragment, but you didn't reference it. So I'm going to say paragraph block. So what this does, this allows us to ask for these fields if the block is a paragraph block. So here we got a paragraph back block and it returns those fields. This is not a paragraph block, so it doesn't return those fields, right? Uh, so that, that's how that works. We can query stuff with ACF blocks. Um, and, uh, and Jason, yeah, on, what's the, up, on the rendered HTML, when I'm getting that back, just uh, on any front end, I just have to have like a HTML parser or something or dangerous. So it depends what you want to do, right? Um, okay. you you could you could use the rendered HTML and use that, or okay. you can use the individual fields and build your own HTML. Oh, that's right. Okay, right. Okay. Yeah. So like like I just I just changed this, for example, to center aligned, and we can go ahead and query this again, right? And we can see aligned center. So instead of using the raw HTML, I could use the description that hey, this block should be aligned center. And I could pass that to Tailwind oh, right. or whatever it is yeah. on my front end and say, if it's aligned center, use this HTML. If it's aligned right, use this HTML. Sick. This this is there for you to use. You don't have to use it. Uh, you can use whatever you want. Um, so like, I think, um, what is it? Like inner, what is the, the actual text in here? I can't remember. The inner, uh, what is the, I don't know what the property is for. Oh, content. So boom. So this is the this is some content, right? So instead of instead of rendering that as is in my React component, I could rebuild that with whatever markup I wanted. Or like, what if I'm not in React or even on the web, right? Like, what if I'm building something in native iOS that doesn't use HTML? Oh. Now I now I can use this data to build a component that is still centered, but using whatever presentation language iOS uses. I don't I don't develop for iOS, but I know it's not HTML, right? They use Swift or whatever it is, you know? Swift, yeah. Yeah, so whatever it is to describe that this content should be centered, now you have that detail to- Oh, cool. Do in, or like, for example, when I, when I started working on WP GraphQL in the first place, I worked at a newspaper and a lot of our content was, was retrieved from WordPress to prepare for print. Print doesn't understand HTML. So, right, like we could get the raw data to do things with it. Um, yeah, that, yeah, that's a good app, use case application. Yes. Um, we're, I, it feels like we're getting close on time. So let's uh let's just uh quickly we'll query um we'll query the uh fields that we added to our demo block real quick, and then I think we'll call it a day. So we'll say on uh or we'll do another fragment. So we have a fragment for paragraph, and then we'll say fragment demo block on demo block, ACF demo block. And so we can add, we can add stuff here. Um, we have our, what was it? Our demo field group or what's it called? Ah, hold on. All right. So if I click on that, we should see, it should have, if I'm not mistaken, if we did this correctly, it should have our, no, it doesn't. So we might have we might have missed a step. Let me go back to our field group here. Our demo field group. And let's make sure that it is shown. It's on post and tag. Okay. We we forgot to add it to our demo block here. So now that that's on demo block, if I come back to demo block, yeah, here we go. Now we have the with ACF demo field group. So I can say demo field group. We have our text field, we have our related posts, our nodes, our ID, our title, or so we could say our node with title, where the title. And demo block, same thing. I didn't use it. So I can add this here. Demo block. So now we get our demo block with our text field and our related posts that we added to it. Uh, when we were editing it, right? So I can I can rearrange these, like put hello world above demo, 
update that requery this and our demo block will now have hello world above demo post for example so now we can do some really powerful stuff uh obviously you have to be a developer or no developer that can use this uh, right this exposes data in a way that you can do something with it but for a javascript developer who's building like component-based applications and maybe has no experience with wordpress you can do a lot of stuff without writing any PHP, right? So uh, yeah, if you do know PHP, go ahead, like do more stuff too. But uh, yeah, I think uh, I think we're at time though, right? So yeah, if you um, if you could, Jason, just go back to the slide deck real quick, because I'm oh, just sure. I'm just gonna end up uh, the event with just a couple of slides. So um, for the, those of you that aren't familiar, we do have all this uh, collateral and content. We have a, a builder site with headless DevRel content that you can visit. And I threw some links in the chat, but those are all in the uh, on the website as well. And then we have a Discord server if you guys aren't in there. Uh, Grace and I are answering questions in there. There's also, uh, you can follow Jason Ball on Twitter, but the other thing is that I forgot to put in and I'll, I'll leave this on the uh, description because this will be posted on our YouTube channel, this event. So if you want to rewatch this and kind of follow along, uh, I will, because uh, the block stuff is kind of um, my weak point. Um, you can rewatch it, but I'll leave uh, the the link to the WP, uh, or sorry, the WP GraphQL Slack channel as well. And that's all things WP GraphQL from extensions to any kind of uh, issues or findings that you might have. And it's pretty cool. And then uh, next slide, Jay. Yeah. Yeah. So the last thing is just a, a thing to to note. Um, we've got decode on March nineteenth for US and APAC, and then March twenty first for EMEA. Uh, yours truly here will be presenting in it. I'm going to run a demo, and I'm going to actually go from end to end. And some of the stuff Jason talked today, because I'm I use purely WP GraphQL. I do not use REST. I'm going to pull out um, some content uh, block data and uh, ACF data and render it on a uh, Faust.js front end, which is built on top of Next.js to make headless WordPress development seamless, um, that framework. So if you want to, you know, if you're kind of newish to it and want to see that in action, I'll be speaking at Decode on that and you can register there. I'll also leave that link in the description in the YouTube post uh, event um, after this uh, after this live is recorded. So just want to say thanks all for joining. I appreciate everything. I think this was super awesome. Jason, do you have anything to say or grace uh, before we go? Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, just go use this stuff and, you know, report issues if you come across. Like it's it's not perfect software. So if you're running into bugs, you know, let us know. Don't, don't assume that you're making a mistake. Like feel free to share like what you're experiencing. We've got great de uh, Discord community uh, for headless WordPress. Um, and then there's WP GraphQL Slack community you can find on the on WPGraphQL.com at the if you scroll down, there's a link to join that community at the footer of WPGraphQL.com. So yeah, don't be shy, you know. Yep. All right then. Um, thanks again for joining. And until next time, y'all, as always, happy coding. Yeah.